Hello and welcome Land Rover lovers. In this tutorial set that we're going to present to you, we have a three part series on showing you how to replace your hardy spicer joint in a prop shaft. Instead of trying to impress you with uh, very expensive tools, we're going to go back to basics and use a very simple tool to get yourself out of trouble almost anywhere if you have to replace your hardy spicer joint. Okay, well prop shafts are not exclusive to Land Rovers as quite a few different vehicles still use a prop shaft with a hardy spicer joint included with it as you can see here on a heavy goods vehicle. Now the whole idea of a prop shaft is to transmit power through different angles and you can see this prop shaft isn't exactly straight. Hardy Spicer was the original designer of the universal joint and what we're referring to is the assembly that is between these two yokes here. And here in the raw state we have a universal joint which also has a grease nipple which would be considered heavy duty. Okay so the first things first we need to have a look at the slider to see if the splines are okay. Now I'm exposing the splines here to show you what they look like if you've never seen them before. Looking at the example on a Land Rover 110 here you can see the splines are actually worn and this makes it unviable to repair. The splines here have actually got a coating of plastic or teflon on them and they are impossible to repair. You'd have to replace the prop shaft. The trick is to grab the prop shaft and twist it to see where the play is. Applying the technique here on your vehicle you can see that it's evident that it will show up anywhere that's in the prop shaft. The little rubber valve just in here you want to make sure it's there as it keeps water and ingress out and you should make sure also that the splines will slide. If they're solid then it's no good, chuck it away. The caps as we would call them in this tutorial on the spider have needle rollers in them and a seal. Now these are the operational parts of the universal joint. If we had a perfect prop shaft then what we'll find is that the movement on all of these joints will be absolutely smooth with no tightness whatsoever and they should not be loose in any direction whatsoever. This prop shaft of a Land Rover is completely knackered. The UJs have collapsed and there is so much play it's a joke. Things should never get this far because what happens is the yokes will also get worn. This will destroy it and you will not be able to fit another UJ into it. You will find that the back end or the front end would be knocking or you would get serious vibrations. This is due to a lack of maintenance on the owner's part. Okay, so checking your prop shaft, you should always make sure it slides, that there's no movement on the splines as I've explained, and also the joint is not worn or damaged. I'll also add here that if you want to find out how smooth your prop shaft is, you need to remove it and check the UJ. This you'd do if you suspected the prop shaft was causing you a vibration, and this would be because the UJ is stiff. It's important to regularly check vehicles and this one, the prop shaft fell off because it hadn't had an inspection for a long time. The fault being the prop shaft was like this. Completely worn to pieces and it has taken out the yokes on the prop itself so it is absolutely unserviceable. The driver of this Ford Ranger complained of a vibration at 70 miles an hour. After checking the vehicle over, it was evident that the prop shaft was starting to fall to bits. The aim of any maintenance is to have regular checks to make sure that these vehicles are in sound condition when they go on the road, less inconvenience all round. Okay, looking at the front prop shaft, and this is off a, a Discovery V8, okay, it's a solid prop shaft with two ends on it and a slider. This is a lot thinner than a regular prop shaft as it needs to clear one of the exhausts. Has a seal and on the sliders here once it's undone you can slip this right off and some people might get confused once it's off exactly how it's put back together. Well I'm going to tell you something about Land Rover which is different to other vehicles. I'll just position this prop shaft. Now the two yokes are in line and if you look at this vehicle here which is on a Mercedes the configuration of the prop shaft is the two yokes are parallel on the rear. This is how your rear prop shaft should be. I hope you understood that. That's generally for the rear axle. 
However, on this we have a pointer. Now I'll just show you that we have an arrow. Okay. Now on the slider side, it points to the other yoke here. It has an arrow. And what we have to do is line these two up. And this will put the yoke off center from each other, as you can see here. Next time you crawl under your Land Rover, have a look and see how your yokes are positioned. The next important thing to realize with Land Rovers is that you might not find the original prop shaft for the original vehicle fitted. There are a few different types of hardy spices or UJs or spiders that are available and they are different sizes. So checking these two out that I have, you can see the physical difference and there's a difference of 7.73 millimeters approximately. What I would advise, especially with older vehicles, is remove a UJ, I'll show you how to do that, and measure it across with the caps on. Now that was 75 millimeters roughly. All the caps are the same size and that should be about 27 mil, or approximately 27 mil. I shouldn't need to say that any measuring equipment you want to zero it in first before you measure. And with these two different prop shafts I've got, I'm going to measure this one, which is approximately 75 millimeters or 74.7. And this one will be about 82. So you have a 82 mil here, which is a larger. There is a larger one still at 95 millimeters. Something to consider if you are a long, long way away from home. You will not get a spider that which is 82 mil to fit in somewhere that should be 75. So you can see the dilemma that you might have. This one, again, as I'll show you, is approximately 75 millimeters. So I have the right prop shaft, 74.8. So in the next couple of episodes, we're going to see how to remove and replace a UJ so it will be as good as this when you're done.